Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Luthier's Lair. Uh, this video is coming to you a month after I completed this project which is the this is part three of the uh, Ovation Celebrity Elite CC247 repair uh, the acoustic guitar repair I did. Uh, as you all know we've been all thrown into turmoil with the SARS-CoV-2 COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I'm going to continue I guess to produce some videos and you know if not for my to alleviate my own frustrations and boredom but I'm, I'm never really bored I've got a lot of stuff to do um, if not only for that just to you know to get something out there and keep things ticking over so I hope everyone's okay I hope everyone's staying safe and uh, following the recommended guidelines and uh, let's uh, see the last part of this repair thanks okay um, I have all my pieces cut even the one for the crack in the neck going to go there and we'll be shaping everything after it's glued so let's glue a bit of tight bond in there okay and this goes in that way so again a bit on the side there don't need much don't need absolute gobs of it it's all going to get dressed out anyway and fit that in place like so okay it's gonna get clamped in a minute same with this one okay inside here and this one also goes in nicely in there okay. bit of squeeze out on this side that's good squeeze out on that side not bad at all okay and then the final finicky bit this one's going to be a little bit of a a bugger to clamp but we'll go with it and see what we can do okay Spread that glue around there. Hold on a bit on here. Okay, and that goes there, like so. Yeah, that's going to be really hard to clamp this. Mm. Should put a bit more thought into that one, but that's okay. That's all right. It's no problems. Here we go. That's good. That's excellente. And I think I know just how to clamp this. Okay, gonna go now and uh, clamp up the wood. Back soon. Well, not for me soon, but for you guys soon. <laughs> See you in a bit. Okay, here's the little blighter. Let's pan up a little bit, and there you go. The neck is clamped, the headstock's clamped on, the uh, splines are in place. And, oh. Yeah, just zoom in here, sorry about that. Goff camera work, I'll never make a Hollywood cameraman, that's for sure. That's for die, I'm sure. Uh, let's uh, tighten this, actually, that's a bit better. Let's, as soon as the clamps are right in there. Okay, let's pan out a bit. Now I'm going to turn the guitar around so you can see what happened to it. And there you go. You can see it's clamped at the rear as well. And you can just see on the right hand side one of the splines just sticking out there, but that's fine. I got two splines joining the headstock to the neck with along with the original glue joint and the crack I found in the neck. I routed out that and I put a little spline in there too. And it's just a case of carving that down, sanding it, and then finishing it. 
after it cures, which will be a day. So, awesome fun. Oh, this has just been an adventure. And now I've got myself a nice new uh, jig that I made for neck repairs. Great. Onwards and upwards. Onwards and upwards. Okie dokie, folkies. Here we are. Uh, the glue has set. It is cured. And uh, I took down this very roughly with a Dremel. Uh, and I've discovered that I have a little bit of shrinkage. The uh, climate in South Florida is very humid. But last night we had a like a cool front come through and the temperature dropped to like um, like 48 Fahrenheit and was very dry so I guess we've got a little shrinkage but that's okay sorry about the noise by the way I'm doing some other chores and uh, what I can do though is fill all this no problem I'll get it all sanded down and shaped and then any chasm that I spot I'll just fill so using uh, various grits of sandpaper with uh, a rubber eraser here uh, we just uh, slowly work this into shape there's no need to rush this it's got to look very good so no need to rush and then just keep sanding and shaping sanding and shaping I do have a bunch of dust here that I can make up uh, a filler with some glue, some sawdust there, I always keep that on hand just in case and we're going to need it this time so yeah, just make sure you get all the contours of the headstock and the neck absolutely bang on take it right down and don't use too coarse a grit for this if you slip and gouge the neck then that's not fun you have to reshape the whole neck that kind of sucks you know so I'm really pleased with the way this crack repair came out though. It's, I don't know if you can see that. See, I'm holding the headstock here and bending the headstock. And it's solid man. So that crack got repaired very well. I think that will help obviously the integrity of the neck. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually sand all the neck anyway and refinish it because Hey, that's what needs to be done for this to blend properly in the end. And we just continue with that. Okay. Starting to look good. I mean, wow, that is, I mean, that is solid. That's more solid than whatever was. So, cool. Again folks, sorry for the noise, but uh, as you can see I'm just uh, shaping this now. I'm using a 220 grit right now to shape this into a sort of rough shape. Nearly done with the rough shaping. And uh, the contours are all being followed. It then looks to be pretty good blue marks are coming out it's following the curvature of the neck nicely so there's still some high spots on there I'll get them down but every now and then what you want to do is uh, get some denatured alcohol and put a little bit on a cloth and just wipe away to see how you're getting on Always keep the work visible. Always. So you can see exactly what's going on. Look at that. Look at that, man. It's not nice. Even the crack there. Still a little raised here, but that can be sanded down very easily now. Since it's shaped. And that's... This is going to look as good as new, I think. Uh, I'm a little worried about the... A little bit worried about the uh, actual fracture there, the break. It's still showing a little bit, but you know, I mean, sand that down, get it nice and smooth. You'll see the crack, then I'll just fill it, and I'll fill where the screw holes were for the brace that was holding the neck together while it was setting. So, 
looking good so far looking good okay the uh, back of the neck is sanded down and I filled the voids with wood filler so it looks like a mess but it won't be uh, I'm gonna leave that to dry for a day whole day maybe a little more I don't know and now I'm on the front of the headstock and the neck joint and I do have some missing material here as you can see probably in there let me zoom in a bit more oh. yeah there's some missing material there that's okay well, what I want to do is scrape away all the rest of the glue the squeeze out the happen and scrape all that away just go real slow like you're working with a, a fo on a fossil dig or some crap hole like that <laughs> Yeah, the dead thing testing. I found this, you know, at the dig on Salisbury Plain. It was fantastic. So, you know, <coughs> get in there with a toothbrush, a little bit of denatured, <coughs> you know, scrape, just scrape away the rest of the glue. And after that, I'm going to use a little bit of wood filler. I've got some really good stainable wood filler from a specialty store that I use. And uh, that should be fun. We'll see if it really is stainable. The thing is with a natural wood finish like this, it's really hard to disguise stuff because you're meant to see the grain, you're meant to see the wood. If it was paint, then <laughs> no problem. Smooth the neck out and slap some paint on it and uh, you'll never know it was broken. But that's not the case, in this case. So, I'll try my best to get it done. Okay, the wood filler's in. This stuff, uh, actually, is pink. <laughs> But it does, uh, it dries natural wood colour, I guess by natural they mean pine. But it's meant to be stainable, I did test a bit earlier and it seems to be stainable, so that's all the voids filled on the front now. So, solid as a rock. Onwards and upwards. Okay sanded and shaped I'm trying to match the stain now it's going to be pretty hard though had a little talk with my friend Mr Robinson he agrees having himself done apprenticeship and carpentry and stuff um, <clears throat> it's going to be very hard to match this so uh, speaking with the client they are not adverse to actually finishing the neck with some black paint. I might have to do that to hide everything. It'll look as good as new if I do that. I'd like to get this matched though, but it might be very difficult. But you know, I'll let the stain dry, go over it a couple of times and see what we can come up with, but it's looking okay. The neck shape's perfect and, uh, well, let's just go from here, see what we get. Well, uh, I've just had the client over at the house and she wants it left like this. I'm like, what? She wants it left with that showing. So I'm like, alright, I could paint it. I could try and match the stain, I'm not going to be able to match the stain by the way. Thanks Mark, Mr Robinson for your input there. Uh, so I said I could, uh, you know, paint it. She said yeah, and then she looked at it and said no, no, that's a story for me to tell. I want, you, I want to see the splines in there. I said, okay, you got it. <laughs> I'm going to take this down to about 2000 grit. I put a light coating of wax on it and then get it reassembled. I've got to check the electronics and stuff first though as well so 
Awesome. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken the neck down to about 2,000 grit and now I'm going to put a very, very thin solution of tongue oil and uh, thin down with mineral spirits on the neck just to get it sheen back a little bit and to seal any of the open pores that have been exposed during the repair process just to get this surface a little more even you know This will dry really quickly because it's so thin and then what we'll do is we'll touch up the bits that were repaired and we'll call this done. I just I gotta check the electronics though. I still have to do that. They were working <laughs> after all this has been through, who knows what's happening now. But uh, uh we should be okay. Let's get a nice sheen on there and let this dry and put another two or three coats of this on paying special attention of course to the uh, where the spline joints are actually <laughs> the repair job's shown up even more uh, but that's what she wants I'm fine with that you know if she wants me to paint it later to hide it then fine but if she's going to tell a story about her guitar was decapitated and was repaired then that's cool because it is a good conversation <laughs> not a conversation I'd want to be having with one of my own I'll tell you but there you go okay I'm about done with this I've just got final buffing to do uh, my client Susan good friend great friend actually wants this to look relict it's a very interesting story behind this guitar I'm not sure I'll share it because it's very personal for her but now I'm just polishing up the last pieces of the neck leaving everything else as it was as it was and I'm going to buff it up right now We'll see what we got, huh? Let's do it. it to be relic so that there's even more stories with this particular guitar as I said earlier this guitar is 24 maybe 25 years old built in South Korea around about the turn of 1995 to 96 so it's an old guitar but uh, it's not that old I think that's gonna hold pretty good uh, I did check the electronics, the electronics seem to be working fine, so. Alright, let's do the front of the headstock, stain that, let's get strings on it, and let's see what's done. So I'm just putting the tuners back on now, after having an ultrasonic bath. It's got a, a ratcheting action. This little power driver. Don't let anyone tell you you can't use these. You can. You just gotta be careful, that's all. Really. 
headphone. Put the rip. Try and get three out of there. <laughs> okay, tuners are all nicely in. Sustained to client specifications. Probably not what I would like, but that's what she wants. And I respect that. You know. It does have now a relict look about it. So it's looking great. All nicely polished up and looking very good and spanking. Uh, refinish the neck as well a little bit. Some more wax on there because it got sawdust and stuff in it. I had to clean it out with um, denatured alcohol which dries the wood out. So get some more food in there for the rosewood. Feed it. Feed it. Feed it. Alright. And then uh, just give that a light buffing. And we'll get the strings on it and we'll play it, see what happens. I hope the headstock doesn't come off after all this. I really do. Okay, the end game is near. I haven't trimmed the strings yet because I don't know what's going on with this. The strings have been on for about 10 minutes, something like that, so let's... good to me. So, anyway, sounds pretty good. It's holding together well. Uh, guess what? Let's check out the electronics. Ah, uh, dang it. This has got a stupid battery compartment in it. Uh, uh, let's see what we got here. God, I can't even see that. Have a quick look. Positive goes to uh, up here, so <laughs> it just sits. <laughs> uh, awesome. Right. Ah, let's see. a done deal, give it a final clean and get it back to the rightful owner. Yes! It worked, so. equalizer on it. Of course I put the if it's not far too far on the bass side. And a volume control. That's awesome. The string action's a little high but I don't fancy getting in the back there. After all I've done to it I don't fancy getting in the back and adjusting the, the truss rod without the right tool. 
It's a special tool that comes with this guitar and it's missing. So the client might want to order one. She can bring it back, I'll do a free setup for her. It's been an honour to work on this guitar. Some edge harmonics, you know. Now if I put the volume down. We're good. Catch you later, eh? See ya. Success. Bye-bye. Ah, uh, bye-bye.